Welcome to another mini-sode, an abbreviated episode of the Matt Sager Podcast. I'm Matt Sager, and I wish I could do a longer show today, and I can't wait until I have the time and the inclination to explain to you why today was cut short. It's an insane story. It's not unlike something that happened to me a week ago where you saw a photo of me with a big swollen lip and I'd lost my voice and had a 103 fever. It's more medical shenanigans, which I hate. I'm like a young, gish, handsome-ish guy who's not dying or anything like that. Having medical shit going on, regardless of the fact that it's bungled, being involved in it at all is very depressing. And when it goes very wrong and gets bungled and causes me injury instead of getting better, then I get super annoyed. But it, it just blows. The amount of my time spent with medical providers should be very little. And uh, that's not currently the case. But I'm working on that. Gonna write the ship very soon. In the meantime, my message for today is remember where you were. Yesterday, today, as Paul Manafort found guilty of eight counts of federal crimes of various levels of malfeasance, all bad, all damning for the president, and paling in comparison to, well, first off, Manafort's not done. He's got another trial with, I think, five more counts, and that's going to be settled in Washington, D.C. He could get a sentence of something like 80, 90 years. That's still unfolding, as is the story of Michael Cohen, who a couple of weeks ago was very publicly saying he would take a bullet for the president. He now has flipped completely. He is supine, belly up, and has pled guilty. He's got himself a plea deal, and he's admitted to eight charges. In particular, not only saying that, yes, I violated these laws, campaign finance laws, the Stormy Daniels stuff totally happened, and by the way, I was ordered by my boss, the president, Donald Trump. Trump is not taking any of this very well, and it's making for some entertaining tweets, but a, a scary time. We're well past anything, a and the people involved in the story will tell you the same thing. We are way past anything that ever happened in Watergate. That used to be the big political boogeyman scary nightmare scenario. We're so far past that. We have been for years. Now we're in a territory that this country's never seen, and one of two things is going to happen. The presidency's going to end. Trump will step down, and hopefully the entire operation is going to be rendered illegitimate because the other possible outcome of that scenario is President Pence, which would be better. Trump's off the rails, and that's dangerous in many ways, but President Pence would be terrible. Terrible for LGBTQ rights, terrible for racial relations, terrible for anybody who doesn't want to live by the rules set down in the Old Testament. It, again, better than we are now but not ideal. The other outcome is that Trump goes full dictator, doesn't accept the ruling, holds a rally. His fans get behind him. Congress does nothing, which is likely in any case. Congress needs to be involved to hold the president's feet to the fire. Any president, when it was Bill Clinton, when it was Nixon, and now for the first time in this new era of unprecedented corruption, Congress is just happily whistling and doing nothing. They're actually on vacation, but even when they were around and were technically in session, they were on vacation. They will turn a blind eye to this until the feds are at their door saying cooperate or it's prison for you too. So absent Congress's involvement and absent a willingness of the president to abide by the law, I, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about a coup either by his supporters or his opponents. I don't want to think about this civil war that used to be the stuff of Alex Jones, but now sort of conservative-ish intelligentsia talks about it quite fondly. I read an article yesterday that was deeply disturbing about how they got to come after us, liberals. Which, by the way, means nothing. Throw out your dictionary. People use the words liberal and conservative like they mean what they mean. They don't. There are a couple of actual liberals. And they are featured on CNN where even Chris Cuomo ridicules them and mocks them and calls them socialists and says, oh, my God, why would you be running on Medicaid? That, that's, that's crazy. You're talking lunacy. That's a liberal. We don't have any of them in power. We have Democrats who are quite conservative. Honestly, most Democrats skew to the right of Nixon. That's how far the needle's been moved, how far the goalposts have been pushed in the decades since. Obama governed to the right of Nixon. He was wonderful, he was a lot more charming, and he didn't commit crimes. But policy-wise, when we use the word conservatives, we're usually talking about radicals. 
people who want to use the Bible to legislate. It's not conservative. That's crazy. So words matter, and we're misusing them, and it's part of why we're so confused and so at odds with one another. Just a little heads up. My poli-sci knowledge is not great, but I do know the English language, and we're not using it right. We need to work on that. Before I go, I do want to say happy belated National Radio Day. August 20th was National Radio Day. And, you know, I did an episode a couple days ago that a lot of people liked where I talked about some of my radio memories, had some less than pleasant things to say about another podcast that's being put on by a radio syndicator. But happy National Radio Day. Radio has meant a lot to me throughout the years. I have really great hopes for it moving forward. And so many of the best people in my life come from radio. So I would in particular like to take this opportunity to say happy Radio Day and thank you for everything to, um, th- this is not an Oscar speech, this is off the top of my head, but I'll say, let's see, Allison Steele and Pete Fornatel, the ones who sadly are no longer with us, Maria Melito, Bill Cates, Timmy Reed, Paul Altimus, Andre Gardner, Tim Sabian, Scott Salem, Cindy Seaback, who, by the way, also worked with me at Westwood One and who I'd met on that episode a couple days ago to give a big shout out to. I also worked with her at Sirius XM. Mark Coppola, Elise Brown, Dave Logan, Kevin Weatherly, Mark Chernoff, Zach Martin, Lenny Block, Mitch Todd, and so many more. If I left you out, it's just because I'm riffing. If needed, I'll do a part two, because if I left anybody out, it's really unfortunate, because everyone who matters to me in radio matters to me a lot. So I'll come back and give you a shout out if I missed you. Drop me a line. Let me know if I've done that. By the way, all of you are encouraged to drop me a line. I'm looking for co-hosts, guests, voice actors who might want to participate in the show, comedy writers. Any involvement you'd like to have in the show, I'd be happy to discuss with you. Send me an email to matt at mattsager.com. That's M-A-T-T at M-A-T-T-S-A-G-E-R dot com. Follow me on social media on Twitter at Matt Sager, Instagram Real Matt Sager, Facebook is The Matt Sager, and my voiceover page is Matt Sager VO. And for more episodes of this podcast, blog posts, articles, more social media links, my contact info, my voiceover reels, and much more, go to MattSagerVoiceOver.com. <laughs>